Hey everybody, it's Noreen here with a new episode of The Holidays Are Coming. Now we're wind, gonna have to wind this down at some point and I, I've done key fleas. I, I showed you how I made my key fleas. And this is one of the few times that you're actually gonna see the finished product before we finish the product. Because last night I baked one of these and it came out so great that I wanted to share the recipe with you because I really have never made a better one ever. And it's kind of gonna be uh, a joke, but since I have a sense of humor, I know that you'll appreciate it. This is what I made last night. You ready? Fruit cake! And it is fantastic. And it's delicious. And it's full of, full of fruit and nuts. And it was very easy to make. And it's moist and flavorful, and it's like it's like eating a piece of candy. It really is. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make another one, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. And I'm gonna put the lid back on this tin so it doesn't get dried out. So let's go see what goes into this. We're gonna start off by making our our batter, which is very little batter. It's amazing how little batter is actually in here. We're going to start with a stick of butter. We're going to cream in a cup of brown sugar. We're going to go ahead and add in four eggs, one at a time. Then we're going to add in um, some vanilla. Our dry ingredients, which is one cup of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt, and a lot of spices, a teaspoon each. Cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, allspice, and mace. And then for the fruity goodness, we're going to have a half a pound of chopped dates, a half a pound of golden raisins, a half a pound of candied pineapple, a half a pound of glossy cherries, and I have used four ounces each of red and green. And I know you're going to tell me, but Noreen, those have high fructose corn syrup in them. And yes, they do, because you can't find them any other way. And fruitcake just isn't fruitcake without these ingredients. So we're just gonna deal with it this time. It also has an entire pound of pecan halves. And if you don't like pecans, use walnuts. Um, but really those are the only two nuts I can think of that would really go well in a fruit cake. But the pecans in this cake are so incredible. We're gonna bake this really low and really slow. And then after it comes out of the oven, we're going to brush the top with this vanilla syrup that you get in the coffee aisle at the grocery store. And the only reason I have these big bottles, I have I've several of them because um, our Walmart, when right before they remodeled, they got rid of this. And I got these for a dollar a bottle. This stuff is never going to go bad. So I just put it in the pantry and I'll have it for a long time. So let's get started. And um, the battery went dead on our, um, our camera. So I'm just going to kind of pull things over here so Rick doesn't have to um, be tethered by a cord so badly. I'm going to go ahead and put this butter in here and I'm going to start it beating and then we're going to mix our fruits together. I'm using, I'm not using my beater blade, I'm using my regular um, batter um, blade. And I'm just going to go ahead and beat that butter until it's light and fluffy and get it nice and um, soft. It's already room temperature. But while that's happening, we're gonna just start dumping our fruits in here. And I have washed my hands, as I always do prior to starting, um, with our nuts, our golden raisins, and this recipe really is a compilation. I, I kind of did some research. I've made fruit cakes over the years, but none of them have ever turned out as well as this one. And here's a half a pound of dates. And I kind of took some recipes that I saw that I like, recipes I've made in the past that I like, and um, other recipes that I've seen demonstrated. And I kind of took bits and pieces of each one of them, incorporated them into this idea. And I tell you, it is just fantastic. Um, get your hands in here. 
and mix it up really well, and then we're just going to set it aside. The most important thing is you want to incorporate it. And Rick just wanted me to let you know that if you don't like fruitcake, you're probably going to like this one. You'll notice there's no candied peel in here. There's no nasty citron. I don't like those things either. I think they're disgusting. And I think that they really make a fruitcake that is gross. And that's what gives fruitcake a bad name. That is the fruitcake that everybody jokes about. You know, when the world ends, that's what's going to be left in. Not even the cockroaches are going to want to eat it. So this cake is not like that. This cake is fabulous. All right, so let me grab my cup of sugar. And um, this isn't good. I'm just going to throw my cup of sugar in there. And I'm going to let that be. And I'm also thinking, let's move this stuff out of the way. And I'll bring it over here into the light. Here we go. Step into the light. in anticipation of doing this video. Let me get those incorporated real well before I have this last egg. Excuse me. I'm going to just... I'm trying to remember, I, I think I may have used my batter blade last night, so I am going to go ahead and, and put it on in here because I think it will do me better. Your squeegee blade. My squeegee blade, yes. It is a wonderful thing, and if you have a kitchen mixer, I highly recommend that you grab one of these. I mean, they're totally worth, yes, they're they're $25, but I think they're totally worth it. They are, and that's better. This makes it so you don't have to scrape your bowl down. It does it for you. It's like magic. And I'm going to go ahead and add it in. Blend that. And that's all the batter that's going to hold this cake together. I know you're not going to believe it. But there's like, I don't think there's two cups of batter in there. There might be. But I'm not sure. But it is amazing how well this came together. It's buttery and it's beautiful. I, I hope you guys this. This just the other thing we're going to do is just add our spices. And if that doesn't smell like Christmas, I don't know what does. should be highly spiced and I particularly prefer a darker fruit cake. Although there is a light fruit cake I enjoy that's just a Hawaiian fruit cake that is uh, macadamia nuts and pineapple. Now all this fruit, I know you're gonna think I'm crazy. I'm gonna put it in the in the mixer and I'm gonna mix it because it turned out so well last night I'm just gonna go ahead and do it like that now. Put all these fruits in here and these nuts 
switch blades? No, you don't have to switch the blades. And look how beautiful that fixes everything. That is exactly how you want it to look. You're done. You're done. Now we're going to take... You have a couple options with this fruitcake. No matter what option you choose as far as panning it up, you must bake this... I preheated my oven at 275 degrees. You have to bake it for an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. You have to check it. You can bake this in muffin tins to make individual jewel, little jewel um, fruit cakes. You can bake this in two standard size loaf pans or you can do as I'm going to do and bake this in a tube pan. This is your angel food cake pan. If you have a spring form pan with a tube pan, with a tube pan option, you can use that as well. This is not going to rise as high. You can see that the one that I made only fit in a tin that's about four inches deep. So, and this one, this is the largest tin they had available at the big box store. And it's, it's just perfectly, it perfectly fits inside of here. Um, and I don't, this is, this is not, I don't know, this may be, I think this is a 10 inch diameter tin. Um, so the cake is obviously not that big. I'd say the cake is a nine inch in diameter pan, but all, you know, it fits perfectly into this tin. And you want to get and keep this cake in a tin such as this or in a tightly covered container. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move my mixer back over here. Take my bowl off, grab a spatula. off my batter blade just give this a little check to make sure everything got incorporated from up under and this is sprayed this this tube pan has been liberally sprayed with non-stick cooking spray you can in the alternative butter and flour the entire thing. I don't find that necessary. I only sprayed it with Pam last night and it came out positively fine. Now you are going to have to loosen it with a knife when it comes out of the oven, but you're going to want to let this cool in the pan. And really what I would suggest is if you make this in the evening, I would bake it for the hour and a half. I would test it with a with a wooden skewer and at that point I would just turn the oven off put it back in the oven and leave it there overnight that way you can let it cool in the pan and it'll be fine and you want to compact this you want to press it down really well in the pan um, tamp it if you will and get all that goodness out of the bowl even though it doesn't look like a lot there's so little batter to this cake you're going to want to make sure that it all gets in the pan and put it in there as evenly as you can kind of spread it around and kind of push down as you're going I think that looks pretty good to me. All right. And the only other thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this 9 by 13 pan. There's a nut or piece of fruit that got out. And uh, I have set my top rack in the middle part of the oven. It is preheated to 275 degrees. I'm going to take this 9 by 13 baking pan and I'm going to fill it with some hot water. And I'm going to set this on the rack below the cake. And this is going to facilitate a steam environment 
so that the cake doesn't dry out and that it remains moist. Because like I said several times before, there's very little batter in here. So what we're really doing, we're baking it, but we're really drying it out at a temperature where the eggs will, will cook. So what we're gonna do, oh. I'm gonna put my pan of hot water, whoops, right there. I'm gonna put my fruit cake right on top. And I'm gonna leave that in the oven. I'm gonna check it in 90 minutes. And I'll be back when it's ready to come out and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, our timer went off. It has been an hour and a half. And um, this really did maintain a nice steamy environment. I'm just gonna check it with a long skewer and you can see it did come out clean. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave that pan of water in here. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna turn my oven off. And I'm just going to take a knife and I'm going to loosen the edges. It came out really beautiful. And don't forget your center. Leave it in the pan. I'm going to cut you a slice of the one I made yesterday. Molly, will you get me a paper plate, please? I'm going to just set this out of the way for a moment. Thank you, honey. And mind you, this has been already been soaked with uh, vanilla syrup. I won't brush that one with vanilla syrup until it's cooled a bit. And remember, you're cutting through a lot of fruit and a lot of nuts. And I just want you to see how beautiful that is. And it's moist. It's dense and it's moist and it's wonderful. This is delicious and moist and delightful. And I hope you try this and I hope you enjoy it. So until next time, Merry Christmas.